Arise Prime Time. For the rest of the show, I'm joined by Dr. Ibrahim Modibo. He's a public affairs analyst and a development communication expert. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Dr. Constance. So let's start with um, our first guest talking about the crisis in the PDP. Um, would you like to respond to any of the things that you heard? Thank you very much, Dr. Constance, and uh, good evening, Nigerians. Now, to delve into this issue of great importance, especially the crisis position in political parties, especially that of the PDP, that has been in contention, we have to look at the issues both in content and character. We have to properly situate and contextualize the issues based on the issues that have been coming up left, right, and center. I have listened attentively to Mr. Otang, who is also a chairmanship candidate for the party. I have seen that he has been very diplomatic in approach to the issues and also withholding punches. Now, the fact is there is a power play towards 2027. And this power play is centered around fundamentally two people or two groups. One led by the former governor of River State, who is also the minister of the FCT Nelson Wike, and the other one, which is by perception, I don't know, but they're talking of Atiku again and some other concerned groups that are interested in that power come 2027. Now, one of the most worthy and outstanding narrative about the issues in contention, especially that of the chairmanship, is that somebody somewhere within the party is trying to hijack the party by hijacking the political leadership of the party and also trying to make sure that he stands a fit on the sense of time towards 2027. You see, let us be factual. Let us look at it dispassionately because I think we've not been able to look at these issues from a proper perspective in trying to dissect and analyze them based on contending issues. One, fundamentally, Dr. Constance, you will agree with me, that the minister of the FCT and the former River State governor is seriously looking ahead of 2027. Right. And let me tell you, let me sound a note of caution to Mr. President. Mr. President has been empowering this minister, both in terms of resources and in terms of power. Look, it is just like playing with the tiger, holding the tiger by the tail. Whether we like it or not, Nelson Wike is not doing all this to hand over power to President Bola Amitiribu. Right. He is looking at it from the viewpoint of trying to get power. He, God has blessed Nelson Wike. He started as somebody selling tickets in the motor park. He rose to chairman of local government, rose to become a chief of staff, a junior minister, a governor, and now a full-fledged minister. Okay, so you mentioned also um, Alahaji Atiku Abubakar, who was the party's candidate in the last elections. Are you shocked that he possibly will be running again in a party where there are possibly other younger people that could run? Isn't that... Isn't that basically destroying the party for the ambition of one man? You see, Vice President Atiku Abubakar has been a perpetual presidential candidate, whether we like it or not, since the advent of this democratic temple in 1998 to the present. He has always had the ambition of running for the president of this country. And let me tell you, that ambition is still burning. Look, there's a need for us to have a change. This country cannot be governed by all these old political politicians. We need a fresh blood. People with idea, people with character, and people that will be able to mobilize both human and material resources for the progress of this country. As it is today, Nigeria is sad to note that this country, as it is today, is plagued by the issues that has to do with corruption, unmitigated uh, lawlessness, right. crass impunity, uh, spiraling in discipline, and also the security challenges that leave us okay. paradoxically poor in the midst of plenty. Okay, so how do you think we can get that fresh blood that you have just mentioned? 
Nigeria has been blessed with abundant human and natural resources. Believe me, the world over, I think very few countries can rival Nigeria in terms of material resources and in terms of people of character that will be able to move this country forward. What we are lacking is leadership. What we are lacking is somebody that will be central to the modus operandi of governance, administration, and also looking at the economy, and also looking at the issue of security. Once we're able to get somebody with strong will, Nigeria is never lacking. So if we do that by propping up younger politicians or younger people that could be able to stand the test of time, we're on a steady way of progress. Not the well, well, some would say that um, looking at the political system, it's actually the problem that even if you bring up younger people, a lot of them are already behaving like the current set of politicians, so there's probably no hope. You see, Dr. Constance, on the globalization and multiculturalism such as ours in Nigeria, we are under no illusion as to the fact that Nigeria is confronted by a myriad of problems. But do we say Hans Akimbo, I resign to God, without looking for options? It is a defeatist ideology for anybody to think that Nigeria doesn't have the potential to move this country forward. We have. It's only that it has not been tapped. And the issues of, of the, the issue of politics in Nigeria is based on the power play of money. Virtually, people are looking for power or people are galvanizing resources, money, because they want to go and maybe hijack the electoral processes and also pay their way out and then get uh, pronounced as uh, governors, president, uh, councillors, and what have you. As I've said, I'm sending a word of caution to Mr. President. He should be able to look dispassionately towards 2027 if he wants to be president. But allowing uh, the PDP, especially, to be scattered under Wike, Wike is not going to hand over that thing to him on a platter of gold. He is also running. So, and therefore, empowering him is as good as empowering your enemy. Because Wike doesn't have a permanent friend. Right. It's only permanent enemies. So are you supporting the president with age? You know, he's, a fairly, he's an old man. Are you supporting him to run again in 2027? Is that what you're saying? You see, it is within the balance of his democratic uh, latitude to feel if he has done well. Because as it is today, Nigerians are suffering. Let us be under no illusion as to the fact that people are suffering. People are hungry and are angry. And look at even the contentious issue of oil increase. It has made Nigeria poorer, pitiable, and people that have been subjugated. Look, for, for some time now, I've always been thinking as if we are still under colonialism. Because as it is today, I don't see the value of democracy in the sense that, has he been able to meet the yearning and oppression of the people? No. Have we been able to see to the fact that, look, there has been mobilization of both human and, uh, human and material resources towards the greatness of this country? I would say no. We need somebody of character. We need somebody that has been able to know the political dynamics of this country to come on board because Nigeria is never lacking our state. For the purpose of emphasis, Dr. Constance, and for its time, let me tell you, Nigeria has great potentials. The only thing is, open, if you can open the door, open the window of opportunity for people to come in, people that think they can turn around the fortune of this country. But as I'm saying, based on your question, Mr. President, as he is, as he is today, based on his age, and also based on performance profile as it is today, if you ask me, I will tell you that he has not been able to meet the minimum standard of progressive development in terms of architectural, you know, cavity of Nigerian populace and also in terms of meeting the yearnings of Nigeria under democracy. And looking, losing, using any, any parameter of democratic practice, if you look at it, we are still in minus, minus, and minus. Therefore, what do we do if I are the president? 2027, I'll look for somebody that is patriotic and somebody with nationalistic instinct towards the development and progress of this country and tell him to contest. Because for now, you can see what Joe Biden has done in America. Bearing in mind that when he was to go for the second time, they told him that, look, you're old. And based on your level of thinking, you're not supposed to go. He, he, he withdrew. That is statemanship. That is politics of conviction. And that is politics of thinking ahead for the country. So even Mr. President, he has two or three more years to go. If he has been able to meet the end of operations for Nigeria, why not? 
But as it is today, it's a pity that we are wallowing in poverty, abject poverty. We have people in government that are more of parrots rather than patriots. The leadership profile is in danger. So how does this crisis affect the PDP's ability to challenge the APC in future elections? Because you, you need other parties, not just uh, the APC. As it is today, Dr. Constance, there's the need for the political class to sit down and think of moving ahead. Don't allow politics. If you say politics for, it's a dirty game, don't allow dirty people to handle it. There's a need for reinvigoration of thought. People should sit down, conceptualize issues, look at democracy from a wider perspective, not narrowing it to the prism of money politics and also prism of godfatherism. There's a need for us to look at people, people that will be able to deliver, people that have the thinking caps. You see, as it is today, I have not been able to see aggregation of thoughts within the political parties, all of them, all of them. Most of their campaign promises, most of their uh, um, uh, they are uh, uh, this thing. What is the, this thing? Manifesto. Um, manifesto. Thank you, Dr. Constant. Are almost similar, as if it is a photocopy. So we have seen governance from 1999 gradually declining and dropping to the last ebb. There's a need for us to reinvigorate it by way of having people that will sit down and articulate the problem of Nigeria right. with a view to solving, especially okay. the issue of corruption. Okay. Corruption because there are some people now that are above the law from all indications. Right. So there's a need to fight corruption, which is a major conquer. Oh, then okay. insecurity and placing food on the tables of the people by way of reducing the pump price of petrol right. to make Nigeria's great. Are you for deregulation or subsidy? The defining line between deregulation and subsidy is very narrow, Dr. Mm. Constance. If you agree with me, if you look at the issue of the regulation, the regulation has to do with government completely removing its hands from the issue of petrol. There's is nowhere in the world that government does not subsidize one or two things. Yes. And therefore, in Nigeria, petrol seems to be the heart of economic prosperity and almost everything. You see, with this deregulation and removal of oil subsidy, the regulation presupposes the first subsidy should be removed. And as it is today, we are suffering from 600 and something naira per litre. It has now crossed over 1,000 naira. People cannot go to farms because of insecurity. And now this deregulation issue, we should look, I appeal to Mr. President, if he's listening to me on this program today, I appeal to him, let him use his conscience to know that Nigerians are suffering. Let him forget about all these advice that tell him that everything is normal. That is not true. He should think of ameliorating the poverty level of Nigeria by way of, whether we like it or not, we must subsidize. Developed countries, even America, China, and everywhere, they are subsidizing either bread, fuel, and water. This is one of the natural resources that God has endowed this country with. And this is something that we are not paying to bring you out from, from the ground. God has abundantly blessed Nigeria. So what is the basis of us having petrol? Okay. And people in the Niger Delta will be paying almost 1,500 per right. liter when others that don't even have the resources are paying less. Okay. So to me, this should be fair play. Okay. Let us think of reducing the subsidy, reducing the wahala of the people. Mr. President has history uh, by his side. Okay. In two years' time, if he cannot aggregate things that right. will work for Nigerians, I think we're in deep trouble. Okay. Dr. Ibrahim Modibo, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Constance. Thank you.